one part of life where central planners always say government must take control is disaster relief. Uh, power is out throughout the entirety of New Orleans. After a disaster, central planners are quick to say a big storm requires big government. College professor Jacob Remus argues that. We all face increasingly strong storms. And you need some sort of uh, group of people to figure out the process by which these communities are going to rebuild. After Katrina, FEMA made people's lives worse. They were awful. FEMA was also run by someone who was put there in a patronage position who had no idea how to run an agency. Isn't that what always happens in government? No, absolutely not. It can be run by technocrats, people who know the specifics, who have this expertise. Technocrats with expertise. It's natural to assume that if government just employed the right people, hey, he must be smart, he went to Harvard, then those experts will make sure the light bulb gets changed the right way. During Hurricane Katrina, Matt Mayer worked for the Department of Homeland Security. We're spending billions, how can you not be prepared? Because it's big government. Big government rarely does anything well. Mac Watch, the government experts make big plans. It makes sense to people. Big disaster, you want to have a plan from the top. And we have lots of plans. We're going to capture 10% of oil on open water when there's oil spill, when the fact is we've never been able to capture more than 3%. After Hurricane Katrina, while FEMA often made problems worse, Walmart was praised for its relief efforts. Why would Walmart do it better? Walmart's business is to make money. And so they have a massively sophisticated weather system that allows them to track. They know where do we need to surge in assets before a storm. People were going to start buying radios, batteries, food. Then storm comes, they get to make sure those stores open because every minute that store is closed is a minute they lose money. No, 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 we don't want to rely on capitalists, says the central planner. The structure of capitalism is that people and firms compete. That is not the way we're going to build a community and a society in which everyone helps each other. At the time of Katrina, FEMA's budget was billions of dollars higher than it was 10 years before. Yet the central planners now say FEMA didn't have enough money. That's a big part of it. We have decreased the number of people who work for the weather service whose job it was to recruit tornado spotters. Violet tornado. Let's intercept. Let's go, let's go forward. So what if there are fewer government tornado spotters? Storm chasers spontaneously just do that. That area could easily put down a tornado very soon. But when ordinary people pitch in, politicians often feel left out. We federalize everything. Why? Presidents don't want to be caught flat-footed. They love the photo ops. They also love declaring disaster areas. Bill Clinton set the record for single-year declarations of 157 in one year. Oh, good. My government's helping me. They're putting blue tarps on my roof. This is great stuff. Most new presidents have increased the number of declarations. This chart shows the increase. President Obama has averaged 140 disasters per year. The increase might make sense if there were many more disasters, except... There aren't many more disasters. We haven't had a major earthquake uh, in, in the U.S. in the last several years. We haven't had a major hurricane strike the U.S. in several years. Tornadoes are down. But a few years ago, Oklahoma took a big hit. The National Weather Service in Norman has issued a tornado warning. For three days, tornadoes tore through the state. They killed dozens of people, many of them children at this school, and thousands of homes were destroyed. It was like a big vacuum cleaner without a vacuum bag, just come in, sucked it up and spit it out everywhere. And I look around and the whole back of the house is gone. I think this is a picture of the kitchen, and this was not our kitchen sink. Oklahoma was in trouble then. You want the big experts to come in and fix it. But that doesn't mean we should do it. Who's going to do it if not the government? States, locals, communities, neighbors. Are they capable? Of course they're capable. They've been doing it for 200 years. After the Oklahoma tornadoes, politicians said what they always say, give us more funds. Our citizens don't need or want a debate on funding. What they want is help. The president then ordered FEMA to help. And FEMA spent lots of money. But even NBC's anchors noticed that the private recovery work was much more efficient. There's FEMA, and then there's the faith-based FEMA. If you're waiting for the government, you're going to yeah. be in for an awful long wait. The Baptist men, they're going to get it done yeah. tomorrow. 
Sam Porter is one of the Baptist men Harry Smith talked about. And they know our logo, and y'all should be able to get in. He's the leader of Oklahoma Baptist Disaster Relief. His volunteers got bulldozers and cleared tornado debris from more than a thousand homes. I've done disasters all over the world, tsunamis, earthquakes, hurricanes. Anytime there's a storm, anytime there's any kind of dis destruction anywhere, we're on it uh, immediately. Well, FEMA often takes forever. You government lovers are always talking about fixing government. It never gets fixed. The response to that should not be to throw up our hands and say, well, oh, well, FEMA is incompetent, it doesn't do anything. The response should be to rebuild a better FEMA. You need a central agency to coordinate. But you don't. You just need some Americans who care. They brought in bobcats and bulldozers and chainsaws, and they just went to work. Yeah. Within days, the Baptists gave them a new home and built them a storm shelter. The volunteers will install 120 of these for families who lost homes. It was a mess out here, and they cleaned it up. They cleaned it up and fixed it up, got us in a home, and they've done that for our whole neighborhood. Jason and Maddie Velasquez asked FEMA for a home loan. They got no response for three weeks. Then they were rejected. All of a sudden, we hear hammering, and Maddie looks back and she grabs my shoulder and look up, and they're already on our roof, even before we really said yes. Like, they're already up on our roof, Doing laying it. up our entire uh, roof with tarp. We had people come from Florida, Alabama. Yeah. Without asking, strangers boarded up their broken windows. They came out with saws and just started chopping all these wood. You have people driving through, handing you meals. Again, it was the faith-based FEMA that brought relief. People I didn't know would just walk up and get us money. It's just overwhelming to me that we were that taken care of. It's what happens every day in communities when there's a, an event or a tragedy that needs to be dealt with. Most of it's just neighbors helping each other. Yep, neighbors helping neighbors. We need the barn raised. Who's going to show up on Saturday to make it happen? Spontaneous. Spontaneous. It's way better. No one organizes it? Nobody does. Communities all across America every day come together and figure out how to meet the needs of, the, of their neighbors. It's called being an American. I don't think there's any kind of disaster that can take place that the nonprofit and faith-based groups cannot take care of.